this morning we offer a holy mass for Dominic Capizzuto. We pray for Dominic and his family and all those who grieve him. Oh my. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, this morning let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord. Have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God, is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in the darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. 
Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all the peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, According to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him to, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death until he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him in his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and glory, the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword shall pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sort of two themes I'd like to speak on briefly. Uh, one is darkness and light. What a great light and beautiful day Christmas was uh, weather-wise, and yet it seems like it's been constant rain since that. I find that almost oppressive, just a lot of rain every single day. And the light that we had at Christmas is something we, we want to recall, not just the weather, but our, our grace, our joy, our time with family and friends. And maybe you've had some more of that, and maybe not. Uh, but we have to recall our vision of light. You know, it's actually the Lord's face that we're seeking, the true light of the world. And as we look to him, we will find the light for the dark, you know, journey that we have to go through. What I mean is, without him, it's just too dark. Um, 
but even with his light, the darkness is not overcome. So that's beautiful reading from 1 John. Uh, certainly keeping his commandments keeps us in the light. But the second thing is, is sort of a big concept. I met, mentioned yesterday that in the flight to Egypt, the people in our church, the tradition of our church, they correspond the flight into Egypt with evening prayers. But I don't know if you know that today's gospel has a correspondent with night prayers. So when Simeon says, Lord, now let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared to the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. That is called the Canticle of Simeon. And every night prayer in what they call the Liturgy of the Hours, people, nuns, priests, regular people, pray that prayer. And it's a way of kind of saying, well, his life was ending, but at night, it's sort of a little death. You trust that God is going to either take you in the middle of the night, or you'll live another day. But until then, you have to kind of go to sleep and trust and leave things in his hands. And so, just a very briefly, we are God's servants, and we seek God's word. Our eyes want to see the salvation that God has prepared in the sight of every people. We want to see that light, the light reflecting, um, reflecting God, but coming from the face of Jesus Christ. And that light will reveal him to the nations and the glory of his people Israel. I am inspired, and I, I only meant to say that, two points, but I am inspired to say one more thing. Well, in the morning, which I'm not a morning person, I'm also not punctual at evening either, as you probably have seen. So my apologies, I am trying. I will do better, um, time-wise. But in the morning, we are a lot like a little baby. You know, we're, we're kind of maybe crabby, we're kind of maybe need a change, blah, blah, blah. And that we can, our humanness in those morning moments, we can unite to the child Jesus. So that as he was presented in the temple, and as he is present in the world, we might encounter the Christ child, even in our messiness. And then that Christ child can grow within us throughout the day. Then at the end of the day, we have this canticle of Simeon to kind of look to the Lord again. So there's, I guess what I'm trying to say is the liturgy has this way of uniting scripture and, and truths of God to our real life. And how beautiful that is, that the Lord is with us every step of the way. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world. And in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection we have set us free. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
through the tender mercies of our God, the dawn from on high will visit us.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. There is a uh, resuming tomorrow, the Saturday Mass at Our Mother of Sorrows. That's at 8 o'clock. Um, we always have the first Saturday Mass at St. John's on the Ridge, but we had to cancel the last Saturday Mass just to prepare for Christmas. But we're back on tomorrow at 8 at Mother of Sorrows. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls.